<laughs> Welcome to Biff's Mystery Theater. I have many tales to tell you. Ghost stories, murder stories, and tales that will make your bones chill. <laughs> Join me, won't you? For theater of the mind, where you always have the best seat in the house. <laughs> Now close your eyes and turn off the lights. <laughs> You're about to hear a new NBC presentation, Cloak and Dagger, program number one in 90 minutes of continuous mystery and suspense on NBC. Following Cloak and Dagger, stay tuned for High Adventure, then listen to The Big Guy, NBC's new unique mystery series. But first, Cloak and Dagger. Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission for the United States, knowing in advance you may never return alive? What you have just heard is a question asked during the war of agents of the OSS. Ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. We have the honor at this time to present a former OSS officer, co-author of the book Cloak and Dagger, upon which this series is based, Colonel Corey Ford. Thank you. OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, was America's top secret intelligence agency during the war. It was this country's first all-out effort in black warfare, dropping undercover operators behind enemy lines, organizing local partisans to blow bridges and dynamite tunnels, outwitting the best spy systems of Europe and Asia. The success of OSS is known. But the story behind that success, the story of the everyday, average Americans of every race and creed and color who risked their lives knowing all too well that if they were caught, they would face torture and probably death, is what Alastair McBain and I have tried to tell in Cloak and Dagger. We feel it is a story in which every American can take deep pride. The National Broadcasting Company takes you behind the scenes of a war that nobody knew. This is Cloak and Dagger. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. I had a medical discharge from the Army. I was in the 268th Infantry Division. My family was killed in an air raid near Berlin. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. I'll repeat it over and over again so I won't forget. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. Ah. Where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Think back and remember. From the beginning... Everything the colonel told me to remember. Remember, Frank, from now on, you'll be Friedrich Schmidt, German soldier. You have your military pass, forged signatures of adjutants, hospital certificates, ration coupons, permits to travel. You know what to do. Yes, colonel. Carl and I parachute behind the enemy lines in Austria. We radio back information on the strength and location of German troops around Innsbruck. You realize there'll be no help from headquarters? No contact waiting for you below? Well, sir, Carl knows the country and his sister is still living there. I uh, needn't tell you the risk you're taking. Of course, you'll land in American uniform, so in case you're picked up immediately, you'll be treated as prisoners of war. However, later, if you're caught out of uniform in enemy country... Uh... I think I know what to expect, sir. All right, then. Just one more thing. The information we're after is vital. The Third Army is closing in fast, and we must know what's ahead for them. I'll expect your first message in ten days. You'll have it, sir. Oh, and, uh, by the way, Colonel. Yes? Don't forget to have that package mailed to Rhode Island for me next month. It's my father's birthday. <laughs> Sí. 
cigarette, Frank? Uh, thanks, Carl. Carl, I, uh... Yes, what is it? About Liesel. About your sister. Oh, what about her? You haven't seen her for over five years. <laughs> over six years. Well, uh, six years is a long time. Running in. Hey, that's oh. us. Get ready to jump. Uh, what did you uh, want to ask about Liesel? Oh, nothing. Forget it. Ready, number one. Ready. Jump. I'll see you downstairs. Ready, number two. Ready. Good luck, Frank. Go. <laughs> I heard the crack of the parachute as it snapped open. I looked down. I saw a patch of snow in the valley, spreading wider and wider in the moonlight, like a blot of milk spilled on a kitchen table. And I thought of Carl's sister, and the question I didn't have the courage to ask him. You all right, Frank? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, we made it. The first step. Yeah. You got everything? The radio all right? Just checked it. Nothing broke. Good. There goes the plane. Yeah. Heading back. He's gone. Let's go while it's dark. Sun's starting to come up. Yeah, keep that cape around you. There'll be people on this road soon. What do you think about that sun? What about it? Astronomers must be nuts. That can't be the same sun I used to see back in Providence. <laughs> Maybe it isn't. Schlaf nun ein, schlaf nun ein, die Nacht ist da der Morgen Hey, what is that? You've been singing that for hours. What is that, a kid's lullaby? Eh? I made it up. Oh? Made it up for Liesel when she was a little girl. I used to sing her to sleep with it. Oh. Frank? Yeah? On the plane, before we jumped, there was something you wanted to ask me about her. What was it? Listen, eh? here comes a cart. Watch your cape. Don't let the wind blow it. Yeah. Heil Hitler. Good morgen, Fräulein. Heil Hitler. How many kilometers until the railroad station? About two kilometers. Uh, Vielen Dank. Dankeschön. Good, only two more. Uh, this rucksack weighs a ton. Hope there's no standing room on that train. I hope there aren't too many German officers. Come on. You know, one thing I like about European trains... What? These little compartments. I'd just as soon be closed off in here until we get where we're going. We've got to get rid of these American uniforms, Frank, as soon as possible. Well, we'll just have to find two obliging German soldiers who will be willing to give up theirs. <laughs> that obliging they are not. Well, so far they've been. Let us have a nice compartment all to ourselves. Well, there's no guarantee they'll let us keep it that way, you know. <laughs> I know when these things here. Oh. Get out your tribal permit and identification now. Right. Hope those papers are good forgeries. They better be. Gentlemen, your identification, travel permit, if please. Uh, yeah, here, Inspector, yeah. Uh, huh. Now yours, if you please, Herr Leutnant. Here you are. Yeah. Here are your papers, Herr Leutnant. These seem to be in order. Danke schön. How much longer till we get there? About uh, 30 minutes. You think he was suspicious? Well, he didn't pack it. Just the same if anyone else comes. If you have to take off your cape, take it off in one motion. Your jacket with it. We might get away with a khaki shirt. Our luck's held out so far. Maybe nobody will come. Well, let's hope so. Oh, oh. Here comes company. Here comes trouble. Uh, may I show you compartment, gentlemen? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, Herr Hauptmann. Uh, yeah, it's stuffy in here. Why don't you remove your keeps? 
Well, uh, it was so cold in the snow country. We're both of us just back from there. It will take us time to thaw out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, join me in some snaps, gentlemen. Ah, uh, danke, danke. And you? Danke schön. Uh, these trains, either too stuffy or too drafty. They're all badly on down since the war. Uh, you warmer now? For much. Then remove your capes. <laughs> I perspire looking at you. <laughs> well, uh... Go on, take them off. The Hauptmann is right. It is hot. Better. Ah, much better. <laughs> ah, are you going to Salzburg? Uh, no. Insing. Uh, sure. Uh, you must forgive me. Perhaps it's the heat. Uh, perhaps too much of this bottle. But I'm going to stretch out in the empty compartment next door. I'd appreciate it if you gentlemen uh, would wake me when we get off at your station. Well, I will be happy to. Uh... Well, then I'll see you again. You'll see me again and soon, Frank. Wait here with the radio. What are you going to do? Our friend was warm. I'll help him out by relieving him of his uniform. No, Carl. No. You'll, you'll find his body before we get to Insane. Me they'll find it on the roadbed two days from now. No, Carl. You can't take that risk. One of us in German uniform would help. Wait here. Kindly raise your hands. I was not so drunk as either of you thought. <laughs> it's too bad about your friend. An unfortunate accident. He fell from the train. A pity. It was as if I were standing three feet behind myself, watching, watching myself knock the Luger out of his hand, watch my fingers go around his throat. He gave a few convulsive jerks, and then he was still. In his hand, he held a button he had ripped from my shirt. For some reason, I reached down and I took it from him. The next few minutes, I worked fast. The train was slowing down. I stuffed my uniform into the rucksack where the radio was and borrowed his. It wasn't a perfect fit, but German uniforms never are. And this German wouldn't be needing his anymore. I opened the door of the compartment and for the second time that day, jumped to German soil. <coughs> Think slowly now. Somewhere from that moment on, I made the mistake. Where did I go wrong? Where did I make that mistake? You've made a mistake, Herr Leutnant. My brother is not in Austria. Please listen to me. Carl was with me. We were both coming here together before the accident on the train. You're mistaken. My brother's not in Austria. Lisa, I'm taking a chance coming here at all. I only have Carl's word that you'll help me. My brother is not in Austria. Look, I'm tired. I'm hungry. Liesel, poor Carl. There's not much to eat. Some bread and some soup. Sit down. I'll bring it to you. <laughs> I watched Carl's sister as she went over to the stove. She was small and dark, and her hair was cut short and brushed back. It was fine, like soft baby hair. I felt so tired, I wanted to brush my face against it. Here's your soup. A danke schön. There's more in the pot if you want it. I'll be back. Where are you going? There's someone you might like to meet. A contact. I'll get him. Stay here and eat. I'll be right back. I see you've finished the soup. Yeah. I hope it isn't all you have. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. Where's your friend? Friend? Oh, uh, you mean, uh... Oh, he's coming. He's... Coming soon. Good. Carl said you'd be in touch with the Austrian partisans. I need help, Liesel. I need all the help I can get. My friend should be here any minute. I think I'll wash the dishes now. Since everything around us is in such disorder, I... I like to keep some order about myself. Here, I'll wipe. Do you mind? If you like. 
Gee, why does this seem so funny? What? What's happened to the world when you start taking the crazy things for granted and the ordinary things seem out of tune with the rest of living? Like watching a woman doing the dishes, helping her. You don't seem tired anymore. No, I feel fine now. Fine. Schlaf nun nein, schlaf nun nein. Nach des da. How did you know that song? Carl. Carl was singing it. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh. Liesl, what is it? You're pale as a ghost. I didn't know. Oh, Lord, I didn't know. You didn't know what? What are you talking about? The Gestapo is coming. I told them you were here. What did you say? The Commandant, Gubner. He suspected me for a long time, but he's had no proof. I thought he, he had sent you to, to trick me. I was afraid. Are you telling me the truth? Yes. Are you telling me the truth now? I swear I'll it. shake it out of you. Oh, you don't... you've got to trust me. You have no one else to turn to now. You've got to trust me. Oh, you've got to trust me. I should kill you. I ought to kill you. Now, listen to me. You can get out of the back door now if you want. Oh, but no, no, you won't get far there. Oh, you better go down there to the cellar and trust me. Open up in there. I have no choice. Quick, 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 that door. It leads to the cellar. Go quickly. Open up! In a minute. Well, where is he? Gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Well, I... I try to keep him here. I I couldn't without arousing his suspicion. Yeah. So I... Uh, yeah. Well, you asked me not to do that, remember? Yeah, go on. Well, he was only passing through. He said he he had a friend in the mountains, in a hut in the mountains. He told me where it was. You'll take us then, now. Of course. Sergeant. Just follow me. Round up the men. Yeah, here, come along. After you, Liesel. <laughs> I needn't tell you, you are doing a great service for the fatherland. Take your hands off me. I've given enough proof of my loyalty. Corporal? Yes, any word from Frank or Carl yet? No, Colonel, nothing. Oh, something hit a snag. It's been 12 days since they jumped. Well, let me know. Wait a minute. Something Here's something now. now. 2345. Brooklyn calling. Brook. All well. That's it. Brooklyn. This That's the Brooklyn. code name. Hey, he's coming through the clear. Time is now 2345. Huh? Come in. Over. Dodger to Brooklyn. We hear you. Over. Average 14 inches. Snowfall, nightly. Take this down. Yes, sir. Average 14 trains a night being assembled. Carrying sugar to Dixie. Carrying supplies to southern German All France. snow jamming Grand Canyon. All trains routed by Borelberg Tunnel. Juniors gaining weight. Over. Wehrmacht gathering strength. Uh, Corporal, let me have that radio. Dodger to Brooklyn. Making this fast. Sending it in clear. Imperative, learn within two weeks disposition of all airborne troops and units within your area. Good night. Good luck. Over. Well, go. Keep the home fires burning. Good night. Over and out. Well, that's the first one, Liesl. They got it. I haven't got much time. You heard them just two weeks. Oh, don't worry. We'll have the information. Uh, how nice it must be to be Liesl. So confident, so cool and sure. But I'm not. I'm afraid. I don't sleep at night. I'm afraid all the time. Oh, Freddy. Freddy. Please, oh. From the night I first came there and crawled into the corner of that damp cellar while she led the Gestapo on a merry chase through the mountains, Liesel and I worked hard. My radio aerial was set up, hidden, lost in a mass of clotheslines. Together we rounded up Austrian partisans. 
Where did I go wrong? So you are Liesel's cousin, Freddy. Yeah, Herr Commandant. I am Liesel's cousin. Would you, uh, would you like some wine, Commandant? Danke schön. I didn't know Liesel had a cousin from Berlin. We knew she had a brother, Carl. Liesel and I never mentioned Carl, Herr Commandant. We're loyal Nazis. Ah, yes. Ghost? Ghost. I suppose she told you what happened to her a few days before you came. Some, some more wine, Commandant. Ah, I haven't finished this glass yet, Liesel. You seem nervous. It's uh, such an honor having you visit us here. <laughs> uh, Liesel. You know, Herr Leutnant, your little cousin has been much nicer to me lately. I tried to convince her for some time that there are advantages to being friendly with the right people. I suppose she told you about the American spy who came here over a week ago. I find that hard to believe. I'm not sure what he was. He was in German uniform, and he may have been a deserter. Mm, possibly. In any case, we had a long search for nothing that night. We found no trace of him. You say you have a medical discharge, Herr Leutnant? The yeah, Herr Commandant. Hmm? The rest of my family was bombed out in Berlin. Oh, yeah. I had no place to go, no one else to come to. So I came here. Hmm. Uh, strictly a matter of regulations. May I see your papers? Your papers, Herr Leutnant. I have them here. There you are. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Herr Leutnant, this is the first time I've seen one of these filled out correctly. Thank you for the wine, Lisa. With your permission, I'll come back again. <laughs> shipment of pianos to Dixie. Brooklyn to Dodger. Bricklayers Union schedule heavy meeting in Dixie. Brooklyn to Dodger. Maybe slight delay. Home team will travel. Over and out. What's the matter, Colonel? They must be closing in on him. Home team will travel. That means he's got to move the radio. I'm going with you, Freddy. No, 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 you're not, Liesel. You're going to stay here. If we both leave when I move the radio, Gubner's sure to be suspicious. But, Freddy... You go to Fritz Heimer. Tell him to send a courier to the other town. Tell him I'll be there tomorrow night. All right, anything you say. Here. Let me sew on that button for you. No, no, it's all right. I'll do it. Take my mind off things. You're tired. You work too hard. If the Allied Army's eyes close as you think, maybe it'll all be over soon. I'll be back. Liesel? Oh. Forgive me for just walking in, Herr Leutnant. Good evening, Herr Commandant. The door was unlatched. It's all right, Herr Commandant. I was just passing. I wanted to say hello to your little cousin and invite her to dinner at my house tomorrow night. <laughs> you think perhaps she will come this time? Perhaps, Herr Commandant. Women are never very easy to figure. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you're right there. What are you doing? Don't let me interrupt you. Oh, just this button. It came off. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> Army training is so valuable. It teaches you so many things. Even sewing on a button. I'll tell Liesel you were here. That's very obliging of you. Only I believe you will not be in a position to tell her anything. What's that? You have made just the little slip I have been waiting for you to make. 
You are under arrest. Friedrich Schmidt. <laughs> American cigarette could give me away an English match, laundry marks, and clothing. Cut them out, patch them up, and hurl. Yes. Yes. Now I know where I made the mistake. The button. Americans sew them on in crisscross. Europeans in parallel. I was nervous, and I forgot the button. And Gubner saw me. Get up. Come with me. You are wanted for more questioning. Uh. Your name. Your objective. Who sent you? Where are the American armies? My name is Friedrich Schmidt. Your name. The commandant asked your name. Your objective. Your objective. Who sent you? Who sent you? Where are the American armies? My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. Oh, God, throw him back in his cell. for questioning. I wonder if Liesel got away. You're going on a journey, Schmidt, to another camp where they have even more persuasive ways of making you talk. I shall escort you there myself. My name is... Get up! I said get up! Driver, stop at that tavern on the right. Yeah, here, Commandant. Ah, it's a pity, Schmidt. We shall share no more wine and little cakes with Liesel. I have something else in store for Liesel when I catch up with her. Her cousin. I'll be only a few minutes, driver. You're not to speak to the prisoner while I'm gone. Do you understand? Yeah, here, Commandant. Frank, listen. He won't catch up with Liesel because she's with friends. Carl! Liesel, you think a little fall from a train could kill me? Carl! Herr Gubner wants to know where the American armies are. He'll find out soon enough. It was your messages, Frank, that brought them where they are. Carl, Carl I, I, I don't believe it. Listen to me, Frank. Listen, you... listen to me. Our armies walked right into that Dixie front you told them about in your messages. Right now, they're only 20 miles north. I've got 1,500 partisans organized and ready to surrender the whole town and the mayor when they get there. It's impossible. You see. How do you mean by listen? At the next fork of the road, there are friends waiting to take us through to the army. The three of us. Three of us? Yes. I imagine you have a few scores to settle on the way with Herr Gubner. <laughs> It wasn't coincidence, but a forged transfer that made Carl driver of that car. It wasn't luck, but carefully planned inside information that told the OSS exactly where Frank Baker was. It led to his release that closed the drawer finally on file number 2218 with the words, Mission Accomplished. And Carl's story? Carl's Adventures, also based on actual incidents, is file number 2219 in next week's Cloak and Dagger. In today's true OSS adventure, the part of Frank was played by Joseph Julian. Ross Martin was Carl, the Commandant Barry Kroger. Raymond Edward Johnson played the Colonel, Bernard Pollock the Corporal. Dolly Haas played Liesel. This has been a Louis G. Cowan production under the supervision and direction of Sherman Marks. Material heard on today's program was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alastair McBain. The script was written by Winifred Wolfe, and the music was under the direction of John Gart. This is Carl Weber speaking. <laughs> ¶¶ 
You have just heard the first of your new NBC Sunday afternoon mysteries. Stay tuned now for High Adventure, thrilling stories of action and suspense. Then be sure to hear The Big Guy, an exciting and different kind of detective. Now keep tuned for number two in NBC's new Sunday afternoon mystery lineup. Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive? What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is Cloak and Dagger. Espionage, international intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's story, The Trojan Horse, is suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. August 1942. Report to OSS headquarters in Casablanca from Agent Henri Fontaine in France. Contact with girl Gabrielle Monet was made in the Bluebeard Café in Paris. I went there alone on the evening of the 15th. I sent her a note with a waiter asking her to come to my table when she'd finished her song. Then I sat and waited. German officers were spread about the room as they were spread about all of occupied France. <laughs> I wondered what they would say if they knew why I had come. You send me this note, eh? Oui, mademoiselle. Will you join me? Why not? I drink with anyone these days. Yeah. What will you have, eh? What have you? Let me taste from your glass. It is very bad wine. Huh? Well, you are right. Oh, the only time a girl may get good wine nowadays is when she drinks with the Bosch. Ah, never mind, I'm not thirsty. I enjoyed your song. Is that what you wanted to tell me? I think you are wasting your time here in Paris. Ah, Paris is wasting our time on Paris these days. I can offer you a better position in Casablanca. What did you say? Who are you? My name is Henri Fontaine. I, too, have a good position with the American OSS in North Africa. What are you saying? Before the Germans came to France, I was a poor poet. They did me a service. Now I'm a rich spy. You sit here in a room full of Germans and tell me this? What makes you think I will believe you? What makes you think I won't turn you over to the Germans if I do, huh? <laughs> Mademoiselle, I am not such a brave man. Neither am I a fool. We have kept you under observation for months. We know you better than you know yourself. Is there anything you'd like to know about yourself? What do you want of me? On our side, we have only the very best. Forgerers, counterfeiters, cutthroats, and uh, spies. <laughs> Will you join us? Ah, uh, just tell me what you want me to do. Agent Henri Fontaine in France to Agent Steve Lytel in Casablanca. Arrangements have been made to transport the girl Gabrielle Monet to the south of France and then to Casablanca. Awaiting further instructions. Over. Bonjour. 
The roses will bloom early this year, I think. Oui, but uh, not too early, I hope. Good, good. I've been waiting for you. It is dark. I can't see you well. Is the girl with you? She is here. Gabby, say something so our friend will know you are here. I am tired. <laughs> Did you have difficulty reaching my safe in Paris? Uh, not too much. With swarms of displaced persons all over France to mingle with, and a slight bit of help along the way from the underground, it, it was not too bad. Good, good. Now follow me. I will take you to the fishing school. But I'm I know, so... I know you're tired. Cheer up, Gabby. You'll have a nice long trip by water to rest up. Oh. And then another nice long trip by auto to oh. Casablanca. Oh, I like automobiles. In the old days, I liked nothing better than a, a pleasant ride. But Gabi did not like the automobile trip to Casablanca. It was probably nothing like the old days. I drove up front alone while she was fitted in the trunk of the car behind gasoline drums. <laughs> there were gunny sacks and a Moroccan rug thrown over her. Across everything, a heavy canvas cover lashed down with just enough air left for her to breathe. We drove that way over rough roads for several hours. When it got dark, I pulled over to a side lane and let her out. Gabby, come out, come out. Oh, oh, my back. It is broken. Oh. I, I will gladly um, massage it for you. Uh, you are too kind. Not at all. No, thank you. Ah, pity. Why did we stop? To give you a chance to uh, stretch your legs. And a cigarette, if oh. you want one. Oh, I would die for one. Give, 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 give. I have one lit here. Ah. Uh. Mille merci. You see? I try to be gentle. Uh -huh. I try to make up for the inconvenience I am causing uh, you. Ah, ça c'est drôle. I remember what another poet once said. A German, by the way, but uh, not a Nazi. His name was Goethe. What did he say? He said, be gentle with women. Remember, they were made from a broken rib. <laughs> I am not amused. I'm sorry. You are always smiling. Do you enjoy the war, huh? I am a poet. There is poetic excitement in being behind the lines, working underground. I enjoy being a spy. Well, I am no matter Hari. You will do. You still have told me nothing. Why did they send for me? You remember a German named Paul Vogel? Paul? What do you know of him? Tell me. Not now. The time is late. But I must Throw know. away your cigarette. Why did you mention I his... said later. We have a long journey ahead. If we pass the border post, I will tell you. If we do not, <laughs> the words and minutes would only be wasted. Altala! I thought I would never reach the border. It's been a long trip. Where are you headed? Casablanca. Have you anything to declare? No, nothing. Let me see your passport. Here you are. All of a sudden, I spotted a small black dog sniffing and whining at the trunk of the car where Gabrielle was hidden. The customs officer had not noticed him, and I knew I had to find some way to keep him from noticing. Ah! One becomes stiff after so long a ride. While he looked over my passport, I went to the rear of the car, picked up the dog by the scruff of the neck, and uh, started to pet him. Well, your, your passport seems to be in order, but what's the matter with Joff? Oh, nothing. Perhaps he does not like to be picked up. <laughs> no. If he did, he wouldn't try to bite you. Better put him down. go back to sniffing around that trunk. I felt like strangling that cute little black puppy. Well, put him down. I, uh, I have taken a fancy to him. Um, how do you feel about selling him to me, eh? Huh? Well, I 
you, you, you are serious, monsieur? Oui, I like him. Come, come, how much, eh? Oh, take him. There are two more like him around somewhere. Uh, thank you. He will liven up the journey. Wait. Huh? Before you go. Yes? What is in your trunk? Huh? I said what is in your trunk. Let me put the dog in the car and then I will show you. The trunk. I will show you. You see? Gasoline drums. Yes, I see. Very well. Close the trunk. I may go? Of course. Thank you again for Joff. August 27th, 1942. Report to OSS headquarters in Washington from Agent Steve Lytell in Casablanca. Fontaine and the girl arrived. I knew as soon as she walked in that Paul Vogel could not have forgotten her. I only hoped her memories of him weren't too strong. Now, as you know, Miss Monet, this is an international zone. We are, in effect, neutrals. In Casablanca, we pass each other in the streets. Germans, Americans, Vichy, and Free French. You can imagine what a hotbed of international intrigue we have here. Oh, I... I know nothing of that kind of intrigue. Then perhaps we can broaden your horizon. Hold it, Henri. Now listen to me, Yabby. The head of the German Armistice Commission in Casablanca is a man named Paul Vogel. Does that name mean anything to you? We knew each other once, before the war. Knew each other? He was an attaché to the German consulate in Paris. You almost married him once, isn't that so? That is my business. I'm afraid we've made it our business. Now, Gabby, we've kept close watch on you these past months, and we're sure that you're no Nazi or Vichy sympathizer. Oh, I hate them all for what they are doing to France. But Vogel, what are your feelings toward I, him? I, I haven't seen him in years. That's not answering my question. If he is a Nazi, I have no feelings toward him. All right, then. Now, the open secret here in North Africa is the planned American invasion. The closed secret is where and when. Now, that's what Paul Vogel wants to find out for German headquarters. Well, I still don't understand what I... You're I'm... to tell him, Cherie. What? Henri's right. You're to take up this friendship with him once more. What? Give him all the information he wants. You'll what? get it direct from us. What? Now, Give rest assured, it'll be the wrong information. You understand now? Uh, I'm beginning to. Good. We have a job for you at the Three Lanterns Cafe. Now, starting tomorrow... Agent Henri Fontaine and I were at the Three Lanterns Cafe the next night when Gabrielle opened there. The cafe was packed, but even the crowd around the bar, officers with ribbon chests, waterfront riffraff and black marketeers, all of them were quiet when she sang. She was wearing a red dress. And in the spotlight, her face looked smaller and whiter. And her hair looked blacker. There wasn't a man in the room who could take his eyes off her. I wondered how soon it would be before Paul Vogel came in and saw her, too. Uh, a girl like that could make you forget the war, eh, Steve? I've got a wife back in Syracuse. <laughs> can she wear red like that? My wife can be trusted. And this girl? She and Vogel were pretty close in the old days. I know my own kind. She can be trusted. I hope you're right. The success of the whole American invasion may hinge on it. A lot depends on how hard Vogel falls for that little bait up there on the bandstand. Steve, hmm? Vogel, he's just come in. That's all I wanted to see. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, excuse us, sir. Pardon? Pardon? This table is free, waiter. It will do. We uh, are oui, Vogel. You wish to see the wine list? Oh, I... That girl. How long has she been here? Uh, the singer, you mean? She started only tonight. Tell her to come to this table when she's finished. <laughs> you understand? We oui, I understand. No, you don't. You only think you do. Go tell her what I said. 
and bring a bottle of your best wine. Dear, it was you, Paul, when the waiter came to me. <laughs> How like you to walk back into my life so quietly after making so violent an exit. Ah, the world is small after all, Gabby. I'm amazed to find you in Casablanca. I can say the same of you. What are you doing here? I arrived here a few days ago, but I've been in North Africa for months. Tangier, Oran, Tunis, singing. How were you able to leave France yeah. after the occupation? You should know how well I always got along with Germans. Hmm. You don't seem angry with me any longer, Liebchen. After that last time, six years ago... Uh, life is too short to be angry for too long at anyone. <laughs> Besides, I was a fool to have been jealous over that silly blonde with the bad legs. I've even forgotten her name. Suzanne. Aha! Uh -huh. I see you have not forgotten. <laughs> oh, it's our wine. Gabby, how good it is to be with you again. How good it is to be with you, Paul. Ah, for you? For me. Now, we will drink to what is to be, Liebchen. <laughs> You could have no better guide through Casablanca than I, Gabby. Come, what else would you like me to buy you from the marketplace? A scarf, perhaps? A gold scarf to put around your hair, yeah. Have you taken many girls to the marketplace, oh. huh? <laughs> Will you be forever jealous of me, Liebling? What is it, the French in you? Ah, it is the woman in me. <laughs> I imagine you are in great demand by the women here. The chief of the German Armistice Commission. How did you know that? I know more than you think. Oh? Would it interest you to know the name of one of the most important American agents in North Africa? Who? Steve Lytell. What do you know of him? I know him. And he knows the details of the planned American invasion. Come. I will buy you a gold scarf. Well, have you nothing to say of what I just told you? I knew that already. I, too, have agents. However... Thank you for telling me. I can promise you more than a gold scarf if you find out additional information for me. Is this possible? It might be. Very possible. Agent Lytell in Casablanca to OSS in Washington. The girl, Gabrielle Monet has been in the paid employ of the German government here for several weeks, according to our plan, and we'll transmit to them the Dakar Cover Project. September 1942. Report to OSS headquarters from Agent Monet. I had a feeling that things were going too smoothly. I seemed to be holding my breath, waiting for something to go wrong. And on the night of the 29th, it did. Paul Vogel was in my room above the cafe. We were listening to my record of our favorite song. Oh, Liebling. Liebling. You'll have to go soon. It is late. Forget the time. Who would think it would come to this again, Gary? After that day in Paris, yes, yes. when we quarreled so I remember that day. Mm. We showed poor judgment to argue out of doors. Mm. It was raining. <laughs> I got a terrible cold <laughs> in the nose. Oh, poor Gabby. Let me kiss that poor nose. Sherry. Oh, <laughs> you really must go. But before you do, I I have a paper for you in my purse. 
dates when high officials will be in Casablanca. Stay I'll get a it moment. for you. I want to uh, talk to you. you. You're hurting my arm. Let Germany me go, Paul. Germany is paying you well for this information know, you are Paul, giving us. I know, Paul, please. Some of it is useful uh, information, but none of it uh, is as important as I would like. I will try to do better. You had better do better. You know what would happen, Gabi, if I found out you were crossing me. I would not cross you. It is nothing oh, for me to my... twist your arm oh. like this. Such a small arm. Think what I could do if I really tried to hurt you. You hurt me now because you don't trust me. What do you want? You claim to know this American like that. I do. You claim you get your information from him. Is that all he gives you? What about his love? Does he give you that too? Paul, the shoe is on the other foot. Now it is you who are jealous. (laughs) Oh, how foolish of you. Think, would I lie to you? Coming. Coming. Oh, coming. If you ever fly to me, I. I would rather see you dead at my feet than standing looking at me and lying. You hear what I say? Yes. Yes, I hear. I hear. No. No, no more wine. I must keep my head clear to think of what you have just told me. Now are you satisfied that I am earning my money? So the Americans will land in a few weeks at Dakar. Very likely, very likely. Dakar is strategically important. It will be more important if the German fleet is there to stop the invasion. Yeah, yeah. That bungled attempt at a landing under de Gaulle's leadership failed, so the Americans probably figure (laughs) we would not dream that they would try it again in the same place. (laughs) One American, Steve Lytell, does not dream you know all this. Hmm. Are you going to tell German headquarters? But of course, this is something they will want to know. He believes it, Steve, every word of it. Good. The German fleet is being sent to stop the invasion at Dakar. Good, Gabby. Good work. Steve, radio report just in from Gibraltar. What is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me tell it, Joff. General Clark will rendezvous on October 21st at Point Agreed near Algiers. You know what that means? Final preparations for the Iran invasion. Nothing must go wrong now. Nothing. November 4, 1942. Something very wrong happened. Paul came to my room just before I was ready to go downstairs to the cafe. Paul! Gabi, your friend Lytell has been playing you for a fool. Do you hear what I say? I don't understand. The invasion is not the car. I just learned myself it's to be Oran. Oran! And the German fleet, on my suggestion, is waiting in Dakar for oh, nothing. Paul. And will continue to wait Paul, for nothing. Paul, it can't be. Do you know be. what this will mean to me? Do you realize what the high command will do to me for please, this? Please, please, Paul. ruin. Perhaps, perhaps your latest information was wrong about Oran. No, 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 no. It all ties in. They, the Americans, wanted me to believe that... Gabi, what had you to do with this? Now what are you saying? I'm getting tired of your suspicions. One day you trust me, the next day you don't. Your French? What kind of French? Instead of questions, ask yourself this. Would I betray you, Paul? Not Germany, but you think. Look at me. Look at your Gabby and answer. I... I... No, of course not. Not you... You wouldn't dare. There may still be time to stop the Americans at Oran. 
I must get back to headquarters and let them know by radio. I should have done that right away instead of coming here. Oh, have a drink first. No, no, uh, later. I'll be back It will not be easy for you to tell the high command this. A drink will fortify you. Mm. (laughs) Yes. Perhaps. Perhaps you're right. One drink, then. Paul sat on the edge of the couch, his head in his hands. I remember thinking how very blonde was his hair, how large his hands. It was not difficult for me to drop half the L tablet from my purse into his glass as I poured the liquor over it. Here you are. Poor Paul. Pauvre petit. You look so tired. Drink. Where are you going? To put on the record you like. We played it so often lately, Paul, that one of these days it will just rise up in protest. <laughs> You're tired? Uh, no. No, why should I be tired? I must go now. I've had my drink. Hear my record through, then you will go. No. No, now. I must go now. You're so good to me, Carmen. You love me very much. His head had fallen on his arms and rested on the table. The tablet had begun to work as I knew it would. I got the automatic pistol that had been given to me by the Americans and... shot him twice through his very blonde head. Mon mon amour, mon amour. Report mon from amour, Agent Gabriel mon Monet. Mon amour, mon amour. Mon amour. Well, it ought to come any minute now. News of the invasion. I've had word that Eisenhower and Clark were in Gibraltar on November the 8th. I'll let you both know as soon as something comes through on the radio. Are you all right, Demi? <laughs> Me, don't concern yourself. You did what you had to do. It took courage. Well, if I had thought about it longer, perhaps I would not have had the courage. You cannot know. I think I do. He meant a great deal to me. A long time ago. I killed him. Listen to me. I told you something once that the poet Goethe said. He also said this. Give up what perished long ago. And let us love what's living. Do you hear, Gabby? Do you hear? Écoutez, écoutez. Yankee, Franklin, Midway, Lincoln, Robert, Harry. Oh, Pat, that's, that's it, the code name. Robert's arrived. The invasion's begun. Do you hear? Did you hear, Gabby? Did you? Yes. Yes, yes, I heard. And once again, the report of an OSS agent is closed with the words... Mission accomplished. A further adventure in black warfare is next week's... Cloak and Dagger. Heard in today's story were Jane White, Barry Kruger, Leon Janney, Joseph Julian, Carl Weber, Raymond Edward Johnson, Guy Sorrell, and Bernie Gould. Script was by Winifred Wolfe. Music under the direction of John Gart. Today's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This has been a Lewis G. Cowan production under the supervision and direction of Sherman Marks. Stay tuned for the second big mystery, High Adventure, on NBC. Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive?
What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS. Ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is Cloak and Dagger. Black Warfare, Espionage, International Intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's story, The Brenner Pass, is the story of an American engineer who single-handed cut off the escape of part of the German army in Italy from onrushing American troops. The Brenner Pass is suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. No, Padre, I don't want it. Ecco, qualche cosa bere. Drink, drink this figlio mio. It will warm your insides. I, I want to talk to you. I, I want to tell you. Drink this first. Eh, buona, buona. Yeah. I'm so tired. Rest then. So, so tired. Rest. You, you won't give me away, will you? You'll hide me if the Germans come, won't you, Padre? Oh, won't you? You came to me, my son, because you knew I'd give you sanctuary. Any man has sanctuary in this house. Yes, I, yes, I've but... I've taken an oath, filio mio. Anything you tell me, only God and I will witness. And if I had not taken this oath, I still would not give you away. Thank you, Father. Now, you are an American, that much you have told me. Do you want to tell me more, or do you want to sleep first? No, no. It is better you sleep first. I'll sit beside you. I won't leave you. No. No, Padre, I want to tell you that may not be much time. I have a feeling that time is running out for me. Yes, sir. My name was Donald Harper. I say was because... Somehow I don't feel as if I have a name anymore. When you're tracked down and hunted, you're not a human being. There's no past or future. There's just the present, and you run. So much has happened in a few weeks that it's hard for me to remember. Remember back from this morning when you found me unconscious on the steps of the chapel. Back to the morning I was sent on my mission... November 12th, 1944. Captain Harper, I'm well aware of everything we have to gain if this scheme of yours succeeds. You but... still think it's just a scheme, eh, Colonel? I don't have to think. I know what your chances are of actually getting through to the Brenner Pass and blowing up that highway. And I know what'll happen to you if the Italian fascists or the German police get you. I know a couple of things, too, Colonel. One of them is the country up there in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I nearly broke my neck half a dozen times when I was a kid climbing the rocks around my grandmother's hut. And just before the war, I took a trip from the States to see her again. I skied over every inch of that mountain near the Brenner Pass. Colonel, I know I can do it. We've been through this before, Harper. I'm aware of everything in your favor. Your knowledge of the country. The fact that you were an engineer before the Just war. Just but... give me supplies. Some TNT, an Italian uniform, and some phony papers in case I tangle with the fascisti. It's all I need, Colonel. Colonel. I tell you, I can do it. It's true. If that highway to the Brenner Pass could be destroyed, it would take the Germans months to repair it. It would cut off one of their retreats out of Germany. Of in... course. Now, we'd have them where we want them when the American armies advance. Their backs to the mountains and no way up. That's it. That's it. Your permission, Colonel. Please let me try it. Uh, you say your grandmother's hut is right near your objective? Yes, sir. 
I'll give you names to memorize of other partisans in the mountains who might help you on the way. I'll have all the supplies you requested, and you can leave. Uh... From the beginning, Padre, I had bad luck. It snowed during most of the 40-mile journey, and it was difficult for me to move quickly. And the longer it took me, the more chance I had of being discovered. Then it came... You know what a storm is like here in the mountains. How it can blind you and throw you against the rocks. When it was all over, I realized what had happened. I had been thrown off my course. But that wasn't the worst of it. My knapsack was gone. All my supplies. And the packet with papers the OSS had forged for me. I had no identification now... And no food. But I still had the TNT for the highway near Ampezzo. <laughs> there is a tavern, Padre, not far from Parola. It wasn't sheer recklessness, but desperation that made me go in there knowing I had no papers. Knowing the tavern catered to Nazis and fascisti. Knowing the rucksack on my back was filled with explosives. But there was no other place for miles, and I had to get food or I couldn't go on. Come, Tony. Tell us more of the story. Oh, well, as I've already told you, she was fat and prima donna. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she was big and stubborn. Oh, she was like this. <laughs> and I thought what she sang. When she sang, it looked like this. See? What would you like to order? Some uh, bread and cheese, if you have it, and some coffee, black. Very strong. If you have it, please. See? Where is the beer I order? Bring it faster if you know what's good for you. Yeah, see, 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 fast. Bring it fast if you know what is good for you. See, see, coming right away. I tried to make myself as inconspicuous as possible. I hoped the Germans would continue to be amused by the Italian girl and not ask to see my papers. I had nearly frozen in the snow a half hour before. Now the sweat broke out all over my forehead. Pay attention to her, I kept praying. Watch her, watch her. Don't even look my way. Here you are, senor. Cheese, bread, coffee. Oh, grazie. It is here. I have it here, right here. Well, no, I, I, I'm I, not important at all. Forgive me, the, the waiter should have served you first. That's right. He's not important. Come, come, take a sip of my beer, Tony. It will make it taste better. No, 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 no. Let the soldier have beer with us. No, no. Poor soldier, he's all alone. Buongiorno. Come and have some beer with us, soldier. No, I... I... Grazie, signorina, I... I will just finish this coffee and, and then I must go. forget him. Come back to us. Wait a minute. You must not be rude, soldier. Men are never rude to me. If I ask you to drink with us, you must. No, no, please, signorina. Some other time, perhaps. Now, now I must go. Ha! You are afraid of me. Afraid of girls and afraid to drink beer. Oh, you should be back in your mama's lap, I think. Tony. <laughs> I will give you some beer now. Perhaps you will acquire a taste for it. Here. <laughs> she threw it in my face. I felt it start to trickle down my neck, and I could hear the Germans laughing themselves sick. I wanted to snap that small neck of hers in half for making me the center of attraction. Grazie, waiter. You are 
Very sure you're not followed here to my house. Very sure, amico. And it's snowing again. Even the tracks from my snowshoes are covered. We must be careful. Very careful. All of us partisans. The Germans are closing in on us. Do you know what would happen if they found out I took you in? An American. This would happen. But I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. And I'll be gone in the morning. Ah, in the morning. One, one. All I want is a night's rest. There is a bed in the back room you may use, Senor Harper. You are sure you are not followed, very sure. Yes, yes, and I'll be gone in the morning before you're awake. You must not think, Senor, that I am being in this business of hospitable. But these times, they're very bad times for all of us. Yes, yes, I know. To leave is important, too. <laughs> yes, in order to fight back later, one must leave now, no? Yes, yes, And the yes. Germans are clever. Very clever. If they knew you were here. <sighs> I was too tired to stand there and listen to the old man's whimpering. Too tired to watch his narrow eyes like small brown buttons dart about the room, looking first at the windows and then at the door, half expecting the Gestapo to come. All I wanted to do was sleep. I fell across the bed. But a few minutes later, I sat bolt upright, listening to the voices in the next room. Daughter, he's here. An American in the back room, sleeping. Are you sure? Are you sure he's an American, Father? His name is Harper. Donald Harper, Tony. The American OSS sent him. Oh, an American, eh? <laughs> Oh, how the German police would like to know that. <laughs> that girl, the girl from the tavern, the friend of the Germans. I didn't stay to hear any more. There was a small door leading out to the back of the hut. I knew, Padre, that somehow I must have come to the wrong house. I didn't dare take any more chances and stop again until I reached my grandmother's. And I was so tired, so tired. Donaldo, mio. Donaldo. So good it is to see you again. Oh, Nana. Nana. Oh. oh, but how you look. So thin, so tired. Nothing changes here, does it? It could be six years ago or ten. Hmm. Nana sitting here like this. In this house? Ah, and your mama, your papa, how are they? Mail does not come here easily any longer. You have heard from them? Yes, Nana, a few weeks ago. They're fine. They tried so hard to get you to America when the war came. I would not go anywhere, Don Mio. This is my home. No one could make me leave my home. Not the Germans, not the fascisti. Here I stay until the world rights itself again. Ah. But what can I get you? The comedy. Make yourself comfortable. You are hungry. Yes, but I'm... I'm too tired to eat. I... I just want to sleep. Do, then. I'll make up the room for you later. For now, rest here on this couch. When you wake, I will have food for you. Ah, uh, like the old days, Carmio. My dear one. I will be in the kitchen. Sleep now. Sleep now. I don't know how long I slept. When I awoke, I wondered for a moment where I was. And then I saw her, standing over me. <laughs> oh, how like a little boy you sleep. I've been watching you. You? What are you doing here? Watching you sleep. You don't drink beer, and you're afraid of girls, and you sleep like a little boy. You followed me here. You brought them. What have you done with my grandmother? What? I'll kill you. Oh. I should have killed you then. I will now. Stop. Friend of the Germans, you little she devil, I'll kill you! Donaldo, here, here, what What? is going on? Nana, you all right? Of course I'm all right. What are you doing? Tony, what is wrong? Oh, your grandson has his mother's hot Italian blood in his veins. He wants to kill me, that's all. I'm ashamed of you, Donaldo. This girl, she's a friend. Friend? I will get the soup for you, Signora Apicella. Perhaps some soup will cool his temper. But, Nana, I... 
I saw that girl with the German. She's... Oh, she told me about that. She did not know who you were then. Yes, but She I... wondered why you disappeared from her father's house. She knew the name Donald Harper because she heard me speak of you often. So she came here after you. No, no, and I... she saw you asleep. Then she understood why you had run away from her. She was with Germans. I was there. I heard... That girl, Donaldo, is the leader of our group of Parsons. Your leader? But the Germans are... Oh, the Germans. I amuse them. Porky and Imali. I tell them funny stories and they laugh at me. Here's your soup. They do not hear me laugh when I get them drunk and they tell me things I can use to our advantage. Your soup. Drink it. Uh, Tony, I, I'm sorry. I understand. <laughs> que bella questa ragazza, Donaldo. No? Yes, no, no. The girl is very pretty. Oh, signora Apicelli, you embarrass me. No? Donaldo? We are friends now? Si? Si, Tony. Friends. <laughs> Too hard, Caramillo. What are you doing? Oh, drawing diagrams, Nana. I've got all the plans made to blow up that highway early tomorrow morning, and I want to make sure nothing goes wrong. Here. I brought you something to eat. Oh, you'll spoil me, Nana. Mm. But it was good to have you spoil me again these past few days. Ah, how good it is to be able to. Will you leave, then, tomorrow, after you do what you have to do? Yes, I must, but... I'll come back to say goodbye first. Yeah. I come, I come. Joe, see oh, what Ciao, signorina. Where is Donaldo? Tony, what are you doing here? Are you displeased to see me? Where is that partisan friend you were going to send to help me? Here. What? Me, 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 me. I am the friend. Oh, no. I can do as good a job as any man. Let me help you, Donaldo. No, it's crazy. Please, please, let me do oh, it. girl, it's crazy. It is not crazy. Think, think what it will mean for me after you are gone from these mountains. Listening to my fat friends, the Germans, talk about the explosion. And to know secretly that it was I who helped to make it. Please, please. Donaldo. Mio. Well, it's too late to get anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I waited so long. <laughs> the only man to get on this short notice is my papa, and he is a scared rabbit. <laughs> well, I was right the first time. You are a little she-devil. <laughs> si, si. Take her with you, Donaldo. All right, then. Pay attention to this diagram. See. Si. Now, there's a railway, as you know, going right over that highway. If we plant enough TNT to blow that right onto the road, it'll be blocked up for months. It was about four o'clock in the morning when we got to the highway and climbed up on the tracks of the railway. Tony stayed up above and I made my way slowly, slowly climbing down into the framework of the trestle, feeling my way along the girders. They were icy under my hands and two or three times I almost slipped. Be careful! Careful, Donaldo. It's all right. Watch yourself. Watch how you handle those explosives. Do not trouble yourself about me. I told you I can work as well as any man. Then work as quietly as one. The troop train of Germans would be coming over the railway soon, and I had to finish before it came. I had a coil of wire around one arm and a pair of pliers hanging on a thong from my waist. Tony, you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Well, hand me down those packages of explosives, one at a time. Here? Here you are. Uh, all right, thanks. I shoved them in where I wanted them. Packed them close. Tony, the wedges... Quickly, don't be so slow about it. I'm doing it as fast as I can. There. All right. I lashed the grenade on top of the braced explosives, wound it tight with a wire, twisted it with pliers. Finally, I was finished. There was snow on the ground, and yet my shirt was wet with perspiration. All right. Last finishing touch. That does it for this side, Tony. Now let's get to the other side. See? Si. Uh, give me your pliers before you drop them. Uh, okay. There. Oh. 
I, I have helped you much this far. See? See. You've helped me much. <laughs> Let me do it. No, no. We haven't any time to argue. That train will be along any minute. Please, please let me set off the explosion. Let me have that pleasure. I will follow your directions. I will do it just the way you told me. No. I... The train, it's coming. Just tell me when to pull it. All right, you win. But heaven help you if you make a mistake. Hold it now, steady. Yes. And don't pull on the wire yet. Yes, I, I will pull it softly, softly, lightly, but firm. Here she comes. Pull it! Nana! Nana, it's done. And I pulled the wire, Signor Nana. Nana. I... Nana, what is it? It is nothing. These attacks come on after. Uh, Nana! Tony, some water, quick. No, I I will stay with her. Donaldo, you must leave quickly. No, I'll stay. You go on. This section will be swarming with soldiers after what we've just done. And if they find you, they'll wonder what you're doing here. Men do not know how to take care of the sick. I will stay and help you. All right. Get the water. You should not have stayed, Don Mio. I, I would have been all right. All right, don't talk. Just rest. Donaldo! What is it? Germans coming to this house. I can see from the window. Oh, no. No, no, you should have gone before, not no, waited. No, 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 it's all right. Donaldo, do this one thing more, more for me. I won't leave while you hold them off for me. Is that what you want? I know them. I am a favorite of theirs. Please, Caro Mio, you can escape and do more important work. And I will not be harmed if I stay behind. That's right, my son. Escape. Escape. There is still time. The girl knows them. Upstairs. Upstairs. They may be around the back, too, so go upstairs. Jump from the window to the roof of the barn. You can make it from there. No, Tony. Go, 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 I say. Promise not to turn back. Promise. I ran up the stairs to the tiny attic. I heard the door close downstairs, so I knew they had come in. I could distinguish their voices, too, although I couldn't hear a word they were saying. I opened the window and saw it was an easy jump to the roof. Then Tony screamed. And I forgot my promise to her and went back, flattened myself against the wall at the head of the staircase. No, no, I have done nothing, but I came here to take care of this this poor old lady. What can you now tell me that she's been Give out, nobody take the Oh, please, let the girl alone, please. Perhaps another taste of the stick is what she needs. Signorina. Somehow, Tony, you are always the one when there's trouble. Trouble and Tony. Oh, let the girl alone, I beg of you. Don't know, no, 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 go back. What's this? What's this? I surprised the first German when I jumped him, brought the butt of my gun down on his head again and again. But the other German was not so simple a matter. He had my shoulders pinned down, and I couldn't move. Then, then I saw Tony standing over us, a heavy candelabrum in her hands. Good work, Tony. Now listen to me carefully, Tony. Take my grandmother back to your house. No one will know you were here. If others question you, tell them my grandmother was here alone when someone, a stranger, took refuge here and killed the officers who came. Then she went to your house because she was afraid. Will, will you remember that, all of it? Will you be back? Will I ever see you again? Who knows? Perhaps. Perhaps. Carlina. Carlina, my, my dear little Tony. Now go. Go quickly. She did. I wanted to tell you. 
Padre, that, that's everything that's on my way here. You you will hide me. Rest easy. If they come, you I will do what I can for you. Yeah. What right have you coming in like this, breaking down the door? Do not make trouble, Padre, I warn you. No, no, this is the house of God. It's all right, Padre. It's all right. No, 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 you're mistaken. My name is not Donald Harper. I'm an Italian soldier. I, I, I was lost in the snow. I... My, my papers are gone. Come, come, this is tiresome. Admit it. You are the American who blew up the highway. Answer. You are mistaken, Herr Hauptmann. You are mistaken. Ah, we will see. Sergeant, send in the old man. Your Herr Hauptmann. In there with you. See, si. Hauptmann. In there with you. See, si. see, si, I come. I come. Oh, I... Uh-huh. You recognize him, I see. That's Alan Zemir. What is this man's name? Be high there. Hopper. Harper, Donald Harper, the senor is an American. Now I have told you, you will let us alone, see? You have talked enough, Gona. You will leave my daughter and me alone, and the old lady too, now that I have told you. We have done nothing to do with it. And yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. But you will not tell my daughter. You promise, remember. She has a soft heart, it would distress her. Take him away, God. You will let us alone, Come now, on, see? Come. See, we are on your Come side, on, loyal fascists. You have nothing to say. Everything has been said for me. That highway has been completely destroyed. I'm delighted to hear it. That many loyal soldiers of the Reich have been killed. Well, thank you for telling me. And what is more, you are in Italian uniform. A spy. Bullets are too good to waste on you, American. But a rope can be used again. Sergeant! Your Herr Hartmann? Take this man out and hang him. <laughs> I cannot do this. You will do as you are told, Herr Doctor. Here is the death certificate of the American who was hanged this morning. Sign it. And the cause of death you wanted, I should write. <laughs> as I told you. Just as I told you. Heart failure. A pity. <laughs> Some weeks later, two retreating German battalions found their escape through the Brenner Pass blocked. Captain Harper had done his job well, and the onrushing American troops caught the enemy with their backs to a mountain. Though Donald Harper did not live to see victory, he shared in it. And once again, the record of an OSS agent closes with the words, Mission accomplished. A further adventure in black warfare is next week's... Cloak and Dagger. Heard in today's Cloak and Dagger adventure were Everett Sloan, Hester Sondergaard, Barry Kroger... Louis Soren, Virginia Payne, Raymond Edward Johnson, Carl Weber, and Boris Aplin. Script was by Winifred Wolfe. Music was under the direction of John Gart. Today's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This has been a Louis G. Cowan production in association with Alfred Hollander and was under the direction and supervision of Sherman Marks. Stay tuned for the second big mystery, High Adventure, on NBC.